Welcome to the Rockbrook Church Podcast. Our hope is that today's message brings you hope and clarity for your spiritual journey. We love hearing how God is working in your life. Feel free to share any stories of how this message gave you a new perspective and hope. Email us at church at rockbrook.org to tell your story. Hey, good morning, everybody. Sometimes you just uh, meet people that right off the bat, they stand out in your mind. It may be because of an outstanding uh, achievement or accomplishment or uh, just a giftedness they have in their personality or outstanding talent or something, but they're just extraordinary. They're unusual. They're uncommon, and we call these people remarkable people, remarkable people, and today we're going to look at how to become a remarkable person family, how to have a remarkable family. Before we get into that today, I want to thank you for being here today. Uh, I want to thank all those who are serving in our church in some way and the sacrifice that you bring and that you give. And I'm looking forward to celebrating with you uh, next Sunday at the Dream Team Appreciation event, next Sunday afternoon. It's going to be fun. We've reserved a spot for you. We have a spot for you. If you've served in any way on the Dream Team this year, uh, please claim your spot and come to that uh, event with us. We'd love to celebrate together. Bring your family. It's going to be a lot of fun. We've got a lot of great things coming up and happening in these days that we're looking forward to. I wanted to let you in on, uh, on something that's going to be happening uh, coming up on Saturday, October 28th. Saturday, October 28th, we're going to host a trunk or treat for the families in our church and in our community. And uh, when we've done trunk or treats in the past, uh, we've really had a strong response. So we decided to bring it back this year uh, and beef it up and really go for it. So we're going to have a fall party with trunks and a walkthrough experience, games, candy, face painting, a lot of fun stuff. And we're going to do it on the last Saturday of October in the evening when we would normally have our Saturday night church services. And we're not going to do our normal church services that night. Uh, instead, we're going to work together as a church family to pull off this event. All of us, Rockbrook for Kids and Student Ministry and uh, those of us in the, in the room here serving our families, reaching out to our community. Uh, we're sending out hundreds of invites for this. We'll have invites for you to give people and people in your neighborhood and uh, your family and families you're connected to. A great opportunity uh, for people to be in our space here. So just pause with me for a moment. Imagine with me our church working together, just like we do for Serve Day uh, or a, a Harvester's Food Drop or, or weekend services, many different things that we, that we do, and pulling off this event for the families in our community. So we want you to enjoy this event, but we also need your help to make it happen um, like we need trunks, like if it's going to be a trunk or treat, we need people to decorate a trunk. And the theme for the event is arcade. Like if you need a box to work in for, when people tell me just to come up with something, it's hard for me to be creative. If you give me a category, okay, that kind of helps me. So the theme is arcade and you could register a trunk. But uh, if you don't want to do that, we also need help with a lot of other things like setup or parking or cooking, uh, greeting, cleanup. Uh, other positions. Last night I said parenting for some reason. I don't. I had this, this series on my mind. We don't need help with parenting, thank goodness. Just need help with this other stuff. Uh, or if you don't, can't help with anything, like donate candy because maybe someone wants to do a trunk but they can't get all the candy for it. So you could donate candy for it. Uh, that would be a big help. I'm looking forward to this. You could uh, sign up to serve on the Rockbrook app or Rockbrook. Uh, dot org slash events. You can see information about the events. You could also see a place to sign up to serve in one of those areas. We've got a team uh, that's already helped pulling this off and categories, categorizing all that and leading that. You can just click where you want to serve or uh, where you can give help. And uh, I just, we can't wait to host a family-friendly trunk or treat event uh, here at Rockbrook for the families in our church and even more so in our community. If you don't do anything else, Pray for better weather than we've had the last two Saturday nights uh, because it's been insane and uh, better than that, we hope. Um, it doesn't fit in the arcade theme, but I told Lauren, this is my dream costume right here, <laughs> Gandalf. This is what I'm going for. So, I don't know. 
All right, now, all of us want to live in remarkable families and live remarkable lives. God wants you to live a remarkable life. That doesn't mean famous. Fame has nothing to do with it. Most remarkable people I've ever known, it's like 500 people maybe ever even knew they were alive over the course of their whole life. You study history, the most remarkable people in history were generally the man or woman behind the scenes. Like you didn't know, they weren't holding office, they weren't the person of position, but they were remarkable and they changed the course of human history. It's like years later after their death, that's when they made the movie about them or something. You can live in a remarkable family, have remarkable kids, remarkable grandkids, leave a great legacy. We all want to have an impact in our families, in our lives. Now, I've written uh, on your outline a definition of remarkable. Remarkable means exceptional, outstanding, uncommon, worthy of attention. And God wants you to have a remarkable life, wants you to have a remarkable family. It's outstanding. It's uncommon. It doesn't conform to the culture. It's transformed. It's different. Now, the secret of remarkable people in a remarkable family is that they're willing to do things uh, that the rest of us are unwilling to do. And the Bible is filled with remarkable people. Uh, Deborah was a remarkable person. If you've never studied Deborah, remarkable person. Esther was a remarkable person. Job, Jonah, Nehemiah, so many different. Uh, One of them is Daniel. And Daniel is a man who is... Uh, taken as a slave from Israel to Babylon, uh, which came in and overcame Israel and took the entire nation as slaves during the Babylonian Empire. And it says this about Daniel, that Daniel so distinguished himself, was so uncommon, was so different among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to send him, set him over the whole kingdom. So a guy who starts off as a slave is taken hostage into a foreign country, doesn't want to be there, but he's so remarkable, has all these great qualities, that the most powerful man in the world, King Nebuchadnezzar, goes, I'm going to put that guy over uh, my entire empire. Today we're going to look at four remarkable qualities, things that you can develop into your life, into your family. Now, growing up, uh, you heard about the three R's in school. You remember the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. And I won't tell you how old I was before I realized they don't all start with R. But reading, writing, and arithmetic. I want to show you the four R's today of a remarkable family, an uncommon family, an exceptional family, a God-honoring family. If you're taking notes, the first R is this. To be remarkable, we must learn to be respectful. This is the first R of a remarkable family. Why? Because respecting others is how you show reverence for God. It shows in the way that you relate to other people. Why do you have as the number one quality in a remarkable family respect? Because today, everybody's rude. Would you agree with that? Are we growing more respectful or disrespectful? Are we growing more civil or more uncivil? If you don't believe me, just drive on 58 Highway for 10 minutes today. Just try to get some customer service somewhere. And the more rude the world gets, the more a person who's respectable respectable becomes remarkable. Like if you want to have a remarkable business today, just offer some customer service and you will stand out like a shining light in a dark world. If you want to have a remarkable family, show some respect to one another. Let it bleed out to showing respect to some other people. I've given a definition of respect on, on your outline there. It's to appreciate the uniqueness, to value the worth, and affirm the dignity of everyone because God made them. Because God made them. That's why you do it. That's the motive. You see, anytime you disrespect anything God made, God says it's an insult to him. God says, now wait a minute. I made you and I made them. You think I love you more than I love them? You think you're more important than they are? 
And when we don't respect other people, we're basically saying, well, God, you goofed up. You got it right with me, but you got it wrong with them. Now, respect doesn't mean that you approve of everything they do. Does God approve of everything I do? No, he doesn't. Uh, There's a difference between acceptance and approval. He accepts us, he loves us, he values us, he says, you have div- dignity. He says, Ryland, you have dignity even though you are a sinful man. God looks at you and says, you have dignity even though you're a sinful person. And he accepts you and loves you even though he doesn't approve of everything you do. God looks to bless people who respect his creation. Whatever you want God to bless in your life, you begin respecting that area in your life. Matthew 23, 12 says, For those who exalt themselves, those who put themselves above others, who say, "Uh, I'm better than you, I deserve a higher position than you, uh, you will be put down. You will be humbled. But those who humble themselves, God exalts that person. 1 Peter 2, 17, Peter just puts it broadly enough, says, show proper respect to everyone. This is in the context of an emperor who's burning Christians alive, uh, of a a top-down place of authority that people are misusing their authority, and he says, I still want you to show respect. Now, in Scripture, God shows, or God tells us specific groups of people that we are to show respect to. That if you want God's blessing on your life, you begin respecting his creation and people uh, in these ways. If you want God's blessing in your life, uh, you might write these down. We show respect to God's name and word. If you want God to bless you, stop misusing his name. (laughs) If you want God's blessing in your life, don't use his name as a cuss word. If you take his word and his name seriously, uh, see, see, one way that we can disrespect God's name is when we say this. God told me to do this when he really didn't. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. We take advantage of his name and his word. The Bible calls that taking God's name in vain. When we say, God told me to tell you this when he really didn't. God told me you should do this. God told me I should do this. That's taking God's name in vain. We're to show show proper respect also to our parents. In the Ten Commandments, one of the commandments is to honor your father and mother. And in Ephesians 6, I put that reference on your outline, it points out that that's the only one of the Ten Commandments that is a promise with it, that that you will have a long, full life of blessing. They may be bad parents, they may be great parents, but you respect the fact that God used your father and mother to create you. And so you respect them, you honor them best you can. Next, we're to show uh, respect to our spouse. The Bible says over and over again, if you're married, you're a husband, you're a wife, God expects you to respect uh, your spouse, to appreciate their uniqueness, to value their worth, to affirm their dignity, because God made them. You can go back to the definition with each one with each one of these. God expects me to show respect to uh, other church members and to pastors. That we're to outdo one another in love and good deeds, to love one another, serve one another, honor one another. We're to respect each other in the family of God. Next, we're to respect older people. You might write that one in. You've heard the phrase respect your elders. Guess where that came from? Came from scripture. God says if you want his blessing, you respect the elderly. I must show respect next to who? To unbelievers. Doesn't matter if they're atheist or agnostic or some other religion, secularist. Doesn't mean you have to respect what they believe. No, no, no. You respect them. The Bible says that we're to share the hope that we have with gentleness and respect. We're to respect them. Next, I'm to show respect to the poor. God says if you're unkind to the poor, it insults your creator. But if you're kind to them, you show respect to God. Just because you have life maybe figured out more than the next person doesn't mean you're better than anybody else. Next, I'm to show respect to immigrants. This is one that's mentioned over and over in Scripture, that we're not to mistreat foreigners, but that we're to treat them with respect. We also see in Scripture that we're to respect our opponents or our enemies. 
the people who attack you, persecute you, the person who plots against you, who plots your defeat, that you're to treat them with respect. Jesus said, anyone, who can, lo- anyone can love someone who loves them. He said, even pagans do that. Anyone's got that figured out. What makes you a true child of God is when you love your enemy and you pray for your persecutor. When they're disrespectful to you, you respect them. And this next one is hard too, is I'm going to respect government leaders. The Bible tells us that we're to respect them even if they do respectful things. Now, you say about any one of these things, what they're doing is not respectable. That's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about their behavior. You don't get to control someone else's behavior. The only control you have is your response. And if you only respected respectable people, well, there's times people wouldn't respect you because you're not perfect all the time either. Nobody is. And the family is to respect one another. Spouses, kids, kids respecting parents, parents respecting kids. Back and forth, all showing respect, spiritually, physically, emotionally. And it flows out to the other people in their life. I'll tell you, I didn't make this list. I put Bible verses on every one of these. This ain't the list I would make, right? But this is what God calls us to do. God, what God calls us to be. He says, you want my blessing on your life? You respect what I have created. The second R in a remarkable life is to be remarkable, we must learn to be reliable. The Bible says that people who are reliable are trustworthy and faithful. It says they're very, very rare. The Bible talks about being a a faithful friend, being a, a faithful spouse, being a faithful leader, being faithful to God, being faithful to your church, to your family, to your friends, so on and so forth. And faithful people are remarkable because people are not generally reliable. I'll give you a definition. What's reliability? It's being dependable, trustworthy, honest, loyal. Proverbs 20, verse 6. Let's read this one out loud together. Many will say they are loyal friends, but who can find one who is truly reliable? In other words, it's rare. It's remarkable when you find someone you can trust. So how do I do that? How do I grow in reliability? Uh, man, we all want to be a reliable person. How do we do it? Does the Bible show us how? I'll show you three ways from Scripture. In Proverbs 12, it says, The Lord detests lying lips, but He delights in those who tell the truth. That's a habit to build in, to build reliability, is you tell the truth. And when you don't, you own up to it. Have you noticed with me that lying about lying always makes it worse. I think we could all give a testimony on that one, right? So you just, you tell the truth, and when you don't, you own up to it. That builds reliability. Proverbs 25, 13, trustworthy messengers refresh like snow in summer. They revive the spirit of their employer. Now, why is it, why does it bring in the employer there? What's the, what's this talking about? This is talking about doing what you promised to do being a trustworthy messenger, uh, that being careful what you commit to or what you suggest. You know, it's being careful what you say, what you throw out there. Oh, we ought to get together sometime. I'll pay you back. I'm starting a diet. Don't be quick to say those things. It's better to say what you did than what you're going to do. It's so rare. It's remarkable. I've been on a diet for two weeks. I have paid you back. We've gotten together. (laughs) That's remarkable. That's profound. That's uncommon. Number three is Proverbs 11, 13. A gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy person keeps a secret. That's a, a, a third habit to build in reliability is can you keep confidential information confidential? That's pretty rare. That's remarkable. Never be remarkable as a gossip. A a gossip is one who gains power from information. Uh, They're not content to not have the information. Uh, It makes them very insecure. They feel superior when they're in the know. Uh, 
they've got to have the information before other people. They want to be the one to share the information. They don't like being the last to know. The Bible tells us over and over that that mindset, that a gossip, it, it destroys your own world and it, it destroys others. You know, in most states, for you to willingly receive stolen goods and you know they're stolen, the penalty is actually the same as if you had stolen them yourself. That's true with stolen information, with gossip as well. Well, I don't gossip, I just receive it. Well, you're perpetuating the problem. What is, what is gossip? Gossip is when you're sharing or receiving information and you're neither part of the problem or the solution. If you're part of the problem, you could just deal with it. If you're part of the solution, you can go to that person. So that's three habits of telling the truth, being a trustworthy messenger, uh, refusing to gossip, builds reliability. It's remarkable in a family. It's remarkable in a life. It's remarkable in a church family. Number three, what's the third R? Is to be remarkable, we learn to be resourceful. This is an essential thing to teach your family. Who are resourceful people? They're the, pe they're the people that are figuring out solutions to problems. Uh, they figure out a way to create a solution. They solve problems. Resourcefulness is making the most of what I have, adapting and finding solutions to problems that others have overlooked. A resourceful person says, I'll do the best I can with what I have for Jesus Christ today. I'll do the best I can with what I have for Jesus Christ today. I'm not waiting for everything to fall into place. I'm not waiting for a perfect environment. I'll do the best I can with what I have for Jesus Christ today. You know, last night in the, in the storm, uh, there was a lightning strike that hit pretty close to home and we had, the soundboard started smoking and we lost our screens and this is like at 4.30, like right before the service. And production team, worship team, just all pitched in, put it together. We didn't have everything working right, but we're still going to do service. We'll do the best we can with what we have for Jesus Christ today. I still look up to our team. of It's just with joy that everybody made it happen and figured it out. No one was down. No one was sulking around. We just moved forward. Adapt. Adapting. That's resourcefulness. You need that in your family. You need that in your business. You need resourcefulness in your finances because you're never going to have unlimited finances. You need resourcefulness in your time because you're never going to have unlimited time. You have to adapt. You need resourcefulness in relationships, in your health, and a lot of things because we live in a broken world and we have to be able to adapt. Nothing in your life will ever have perfect circumstances. Amen, somebody? There's no such thing as a perfect job, a perfect school, perfect church, perfect house, perfect family. There's always something wrong with it. That's why you have to know how to adapt. One of the great examples of adaptability, of resourcefulness, would be the Apostle Paul. And in Philippians 4.12, this is the verse before that really famous verse that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This is what he says right before that. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or with little. And he's writing this one from prison. And a family is a great place to learn this. Not That sounds like family's prison. That's not what I mean, but... <laughs> It's a great place to be prepared to learn this, okay? You lead one another to adapting, to knowing what it is, to live with joy no matter what happens. You lead each other through problem solving, through being resourceful. Jesus was a master at this. He taught people by asking questions, by telling stories, by telling a parable, and then letting people wrestle with the conclusion. With your kids, they present a problem. Don't solve it right away. Say, let's play a game of three. Let's come up with three solutions to this problem. And then help them out. You can offer some and work with them. But 
Help, help them plan out a scenario. If I make this decision, what will happen next? And then what choice will I have there? And if I make that decision, how will this person, how might they respond? And you help them map out a scenario of how things will go. Now, God has given a great gift uh, to families as a resource, and that is a spiritual family. That we don't have to figure it out on our own. You don't have to solve every problem by yourself. Uh, that we can help each other out. You know what one ingredient is, what one of the, the, the major ingredients, the most important ingredient as to whether or not a kid makes it in life? Like whether they make it in their faith or make it in their job, make it in their schooling. It's whether or not if they have one other caring adult in their life. In addition to their parents, do they have another caring adult in their life? So the friends that our kids choose, it's, it's important. But it's really, do they have another caring adult in their life? Another influence? That's what's most crucial. So I put on your notes here a few, a few things. One of them is the kids' services here at Rockbrook. It's a great opportunity for them to know God and, and others and to grow and to be connected to a caring adult. Kids' baptism class, you'll hear about that in the announcements. I'm wearing my, my kids' small group shirt today uh, because kids' small group meets on Monday evenings, 5.30. It's a great opportunity for your kid to get connected, yes, to other kids, but to another caring adult. This is still totally open. Come to this. Get your kids registered for this. More than welcome. If you'd love to help out at something like this in Rockbrook for Kids or small groups, make a difference in a kid's life, be another caring adult, that would be huge. I believe it blessed your life. I really do. My kid is in two small groups. Already, kids' small group leaders had such a profound impact in their life. I just want to thank those who serve in our kids' ministry and small group. Can we just pause and hear it for them? And thank wah, 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 wah. Also, the next age group, up, our youth group's actually ho hosting a parent welcome event uh, next Wednesday, October 4th. Uh, for the teens in our church and out of kindness they held off on their parent event uh, to get off of back to school time because we know that's crazy for you and everything but they're offering that next Wednesday uh, if you need to bring small children to that that's fine uh, it's going to be a family friendly event great place to get your questions answered or uh, to connect with our student ministry a uh, letter went out to parents of kids who are involved uh, but if you want that or didn't get that, you'd love to see that. Just write that. Just write the parent welcome event on your communication card, and we'll send that out to you. Yesterday, our our student team, uh, the leaders, they hosted uh, another church here for a, a a national day of of youth training, of working with of teens and with youth, and it was a great event uh, yesterday. It took all morning. They gave up their whole Saturday morning to host that event. I'm so thankful for our student ministries team here. Can we hear it just once again for those, those leaders? And... <laughs> wah, 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 wah! All right, let's go to the next one, number four. If you wanna build a remarkable family, you gotta learn the fourth R, and that is to build in resilience. What does resilience mean? Listen now. It means you don't fall apart when things fall apart. <laughs> We live in a nation today filled with people who don't know how to not fall apart when things are falling apart. When something goes wrong, they just give up. If at first you don't succeed, expect someone else to do it for you, right? Like, <laughs> someone who is resilient, they have the same problems as everybody. Everybody has the same problems, but they keep going. They move ahead. Here's the definition of resilience. It's the ability to bounce back from a loss, a failure, a discouragement, or a disappointment. You've learned this. I mean, you're here today. You have bounced back from some stuff. And this is one of the most important life skills. And families who learn to be respectful and reliable, resourceful, resilient, they never struggle to be remarkable because there are so few families like this. Let me give you a couple verses. Proverbs 24, 16. Let's read this one together. Though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again. 
You know what's comforting to me about this verse? Is that even the righteous fall. Righteousness doesn't mean perfect. Doesn't mean you don't fall. It means you have a right standing with God. That comes through Jesus Christ. Righteousness means you know how to repent. You know how to fall and turn back to God. So even when you trust Jesus Christ, you might stumble. Even good people stumble. The righteous mess up. But failure is never fatal. Here's one way to look at it. We all fail, but the resilient, they fail fast. They bounce back from an addiction relapse. They bounce back from a financial failure. They bounce back from a job failure. They bounce back from a diet failure. They bounce back from, from their doubt and, and being well, wayward. They never expected to be perfect in the first place. They knew they would have to repent. They knew they'd have to bounce back. They knew that they would need that. The people who fear, fear failure the most are those who were not allowed to fail growing up. The, the subject was just changed. Uh, we didn't let them feel it. It's part of growing up. Feeling bad is a part of life. I wish it weren't, but it is. And the sooner that we realize law number one, that everything on planet earth is broken, the quicker you can get to law number two is that everything's broken except the word of God. Except God. He's perfect. And God's love for you is perfect. And life is hard, but God is good. And so life can be good, even in a broken world, if God's in it. And a marriage can be good, even in a broken marriage, because God's in it. And so can everything else. And ultimately, we're going to a place where it's good all the time. If we've trusted in Christ, and that's heaven, but this is not heaven. And here we do. We have setbacks and we have cancer and we have bullies and we have abuse and we have sickness and we have war and we have a lot of other things but life can be good in the middle of the bad but it's a choice it's a choice to repent to turn to God to be resilient another good example from the apostle Paul of resilience is he said we are hard pressed on every side by troubles Have you ever felt that way like it's just coming in from every side but we are not crushed we are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are humble. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. That's resilience. That's grit. That's being a Christian. That you can knock me down, but you can't knock me out. You can get to me, but you can't get to the most important thing to me, and that is Christ Jesus. That nothing can separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. You can't touch that. I wanted to share this. This is from a mom who, her and her kids went through a terrible ordeal. But listen to the resilience in her testimony. She said, I learned that the way to be resilient is not to depend on my own strength because I didn't have enough, but to depend on God's strength. And he would get me through the hard time that I went through. I taught my kids that as well. I think we want to protect our kids and shelter them, but we need to show them that they will go through loss. Everyone experiences something in their life and to help them learn how to walk through it and depend on God through it. And he's able to be faithful and get us through the toughest of times. That to me is what showing resilience is. Is this a needed quality in our world today? Some of you have had setbacks, relational setbacks, financial setbacks, mental health setbacks, spiritual setbacks. And that's why you need to be here at this church. That's why we, that's why we got to show each other the grace that we do. Rockbrook wants to be that place of grace in your life. I've needed it. You need it. Our community needs it. This place was built on helping people become resilient to things falling apart. Yeah, things may be falling apart, but I'm not. Why? Because of what we know. Romans 5.3 it says, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. 
What is endurance? It's another word for resilience. It's you want to quit, but you endure. You persist. You know this. You've endured. Like, you wanted to deconstruct, but your faith endured. <laughs> like, your depression didn't want you to be here today, but you were resilient. You endured. The grief wanted to put you down, but it couldn't knock you out. You were pressed on every side, but you weren't crushed. Your doubt wanted to hold you back from believing, but you leaned in all the more because of what you know. These four R's, respect, reliability, resourcefulness, resilience, they all come from Jesus Christ. And if you get Christ in your life, you're going to have the power you need to be remarkable. Let's go to him in prayer together. Christ Jesus, I want to have an uncommon, remarkable response to life, all for your glory. Would you just pray this to him uh, tonight? I want to learn to be respectful to everybody, not because they deserve it or not, but because you do, and you made them. And so I will show them respect out of my respect for you. And Lord, I want to have an uncommon reliability uh, to my word and more importantly to your word. Lord, help me to adapt and to be resourceful for the sake of my family to your great name. And Lord, help me to remember because we know that you work all things together to good, for good, because we know that you never stop loving us, because we know that you use even the bad stuff in good ways in our lives. That we can be a righteous person who falls and gets back up because of your grace, because we repented, because we turned back to you, because we turned from our sin to your great love. And Lord, because of your grace and power, I invite you to fill my life, to fill my family with your love, with your salvation, with your hope. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. We would love for you to get connected to what's going on at Rockbrook. Visit us online at rockbrook.org for service times, small group information, and other ways you can discover your purpose here on earth.